Alrighty guys, so we saw how to get a z-score, we understand a little more now what z-scores represent, the probabilities associated with them, and also how to find those probabilities to the z-table. Now let's go ahead and just bring it all together and start applying these to um, just real world problems. So the whole purpose of z-scores and probabilities associated with them is for you to be able to find probabilities for events within the real world. Right? You don't talk about <laughs> situations and things like in events. For example, you don't say, what's the probability of you getting a z-score that's greater than 3? Really, at the end of the day, you're kind of focusing on real-world issues, heights, weights, GPAs, numbers that are associated with and tied to real-world events. So, for example, it's a really random one. What is the probability of finding someone who's taller than 6'3"? So, what you'd want to say is, tie that 6'3 to a z-score. And then from there, you use a z-score to find probabilities associated with it. Does that make sense? So we saw how to find probabilities with the z-scores. Now, let's go ahead and bring in now the concept of the x value, converting that to a z-score, and bring it all together. So any given interval within a normal distribution, and a normal I mean by the real world problem, right? As opposed to the z-score. The z-score is based on a standard normal distribution. And so it's standardized, it's very rigid, it has probabilities associated, and it's cute, but it's not actually tied to what the real situation is. So in a normal distribution, you can be transformed into a z-score. So any particular interval, z-score or scores, right? So we can have two x values because that means we get two z-scores. And we've already seen how to do two z-scores. And then we can find probabilities based on those z-scores that are associated with the x value. So just here real quick, uh, an example where you're going to be talking about the person who's six foot three, right? So in the middle, we're going to have the average. And so this is the average height. What's the what's z-score for that average, or the mean? It's going to be 0, right? So this is kind of bringing it all together. Now the x value that we're interested in this example that I mentioned up, up here was someone who's taller than 6'3". 6-3, right? The x value is the number that you're interested in within the real world kind of situation. So here's 6 foot 3, right? And then from there we get a z-score for it. How do we do that? We get that by using this formula here. Does that make sense? So once we have an average height, we have our x value 6 foot 3, and then divide that by the standard deviation, whatever that ends up being. Right? We don't know the standard deviation or the mean. That's going to be given to you. Um, so x is the observation, mu x is the mean of those observations, and then si sigma x is going to be the standard deviation. So let's go ahead and do some problems. So we have, given that the mean and standard deviation for men's heights is 6 feet and 2 inches respectively, what is the probability of randomly selecting an individual who is taller than 6 foot 3? So they tell us that the mean is 6 feet, right? These are going to be our x's, this is z's. But we have 6 foot 0 inches and then we have inches. So what you have to do from the beginning is convert everything to one scale. So it's either going to be all in inches, all your numbers are going to be in inches, or all your numbers are going to be in feet. Either way, your probability is going to be the same, as long as all the units correspond, however. So what I'm going to do is inches just because I don't want decimals. I don't like decimals. They're ugly. <laughs> so 2 inches, I'll leave that as a standard deviation. But my mean is 6 feet, which then converts to how many inches? So for every foot, there's 12 inches. So 12 times 6, we get a total of 72 inches. Does that make sense? So probability of us finding someone who's taller than six feet I'm sorry six foot three so we got six foot three six foot three inches converts to just three more inches than six feet right so 75 inches cool so we end up with a mean of 72 what's the z-score for that mean good so the z-score for that is going to be zero and then we get an x value of 75. Cool. That's going to be greater than 72, so we're on the right. And then we get a z-score. This z-score, what should the sign be, positive or negative? It's going to be positive because we're to the right. 
So, but we don't know what it's going to be quite yet. How do we get the z-score that corresponds to that x value? So the way we get that z-score is z equals x minus the mean over the standard deviation, right? So the x is 75, take away 72 because that's our mean, and divide that by a standard deviation of 2. So our z-score ends up being, I'm sorry, 3 over 2 or 1.5. Yay. Yay, hooray, yay. So we got our z-score, but are we done? No, right, because they're asking us what's the probability. So we got a z-score, cool story, bro, but we need to find a probability. So first things first, let's go ahead and highlight our interval, right? So we're looking for taller than six foot three, aka taller than 75 inches. So it's gonna be shading to the right of 75. Does that make sense? Alrighty, so now what's our next step? Our next step, we just kind of finished a lot of practice problems to reinforce this. Our next step is then to look it up in the table, right? Again, this table is the last page in your set. It's not going to be right after this page, so just bear with me. It's just for me to have it right next to it. So our z-score then is, so our z-score is 1.5. So let's go ahead and highlight that. So 1.5 zero, right? It's basically 1.50, it's not 0.1.51. So we get it right here. So 0 0.4332, let's go ahead and move back up to our problem. Now, where does 0 0.4332 belong in this distribution? Where do we write that in? It's gonna be right here. Again, from zero to our z-score of 1.5, right? So 0 0.4332, is that our answer? No, because it's not the shaded area, right? Good job. So our answer then ends up being the probability that x is greater than 75. And so remember how before we said the probability about the z, right? The probability that z is greater, the probability that z is between, blah, blah, blah. Now we're going to a real problem. So instead of working in the z world, we're bringing it back to the actual issue itself. We're talking about heights, right? So the probability that a height, x, is greater than 75 inches, right? equals 0.5 minus 0.4332 and that gives us 0 0.0668 Ooh, almost ran out of space um, but the way we do that the reason we do that actually is because remember from 0 or the midpoint all the way down the probability is 0.5 right and so say from 0 all the way down is 0.5 cool story bro from 0 to 1.5 is 0 0.4332, so to get from, point, um, some, from 75 all the way on, it's 0 0.5 minus that little 0 0.4332. Cool? So let's go ahead and move on to the next one. Given that the mean and standard deviation for women's heights is 5, 10, and 1 respectively, what is the probability of selecting an individual who is taller than 6 foot 3? So let's go ahead and convert these to inches again, just because I like inches. I'd rather do it in inches. Uh, that sounds weird. <laughs> um, so the mean is <laughs> that the mean is five foot ten. So five foot ten, five foot twelve is basically six feet, right? And that was seventy two inches. So five ten is just two inches less than that. So it's seventy inches. Standard deviation, that actually doesn't change. We're still at one inch, so we're good. And then our x value, we're talking about a person who's six foot three again. Right? So six foot three converted to seventy-five inches. Bam. So our midpoint is five ten, aka seventy inches. The z score for that is what? Z score is zero. Good. And remember the x values represent just heights, right? And then the z's are the z scores associated with each of those heights. So we have a height then of seventy is our midpoint, and then seventy-five is our value that we're interested in. And what are we interested in? Is it greater than or less than that? We're interested in finding someone who's a woman in this particular case, who's taller than six feet. Six foot three, I'm sorry. So our next step is to get a z-score, right? Because we, we have all the information very cute, but we still don't know the z-score, and therefore we can't get a probability yet. So let's convert that x to a z-score. So z equals x minus mu, so in this case it's 75 minus 70 over 1. 
So our z-score is 5. Very different from the one, the one before for men. Why is that? One reason is because the women are shifted over in height, right? So here's our distribution, midpoint of 70. And then men have a distribution that's actually a little more to the right. And this midpoint is 72, right? So from the get-go, they're already separated by a height. So here's 70 and then here's a 72 one. So here's women and here's men. But then also, the women are less spread out. So we've seen this before that when it's less spread out, the same value can have a higher z-score because it's gonna be more extreme. Because when it's less spread out, it's more concentrated around the mean. So there's a lot of numbers that are, a lot of data or a lot of observations are gonna be close to the mean. And then as you move further and further away, it gets even more extreme for a smaller spread than for a higher spread. Um, so we got a z-score of five. Let's go ahead and look that up in our table, right? Just following the same procedure that we did last time. Oh no, there's no five. What do we do? Oh, crazy. <laughs> so we what we do then is anything past here, just assume it's 0.5, right? So we got a z-score of five. We're gonna assume that the probability associated with that is 0.5. That probability goes where? From zero to that five, right? So here's 0.5. Now, how do we get our final answer? It's going to be just like we did for example 1, right? So from here all the way down is 0.5. So if the whole area is 0.5, we have the smaller chunk is 0.5, we just get this little leftover area to the right of 75 by subtracting those two numbers. So the probability that x is greater than 75 for women is 0.5 minus 0.5 a.k. zero. Again, we have a higher z-score because women are not only shorter, but the data is less spread out. So since we have a higher z-score, it's a, a more extreme number. Why is it more extreme? Because the probability of us finding a woman who's 75 inches or taller is 0%, or very unlikely. As opposed to men, there is a 6.68% chance that you'd find a guy who's taller than 6'3", or 75 inches. So there we see two distributions looking at the same z-score and then their probabilities and it kind of just brings all of those concepts back together about probabilities, z-scores, extreme z-scores, why are distributions different from each other. So let's go ahead and move on to number three. The grades in your stats class are horrible. Just kidding, I don't really know. Again, these numbers are totally made up. <laughs> so good job you're seeing this video. The class average is a 42 out of 100 with a standard deviation of 10. What is the probability of randomly picking one of your classmates who has a grade of higher than an 85? So here we have midpoint is class average was 42, standard deviation of 10. So these are all grades, right? So X represents just grades and then the Z scores. So what are we interested in? We're interested in finding someone who has a higher than 85. So here's 85. Our next step is to, let's go ahead and just shade. So we're higher than 85, bam. And our last step, well not our last step, I'm sorry, our next step, <laughs> there's a lot of steps in this process. We have to get the z-score, right? So z is x minus me over sigma. So x is, what we're interested in is the 85, score of 85, smart person. Uh, 42 is our average, and divide all that by 10. Right? So we end up with 4.3 is our z score because 85 minus 42 is 43 divided by 10. You just move that decimal place over. Cool. So 4.3, what do we do? We go to our z table, right? Look up 4.3. Oh no. So we get 0.5, right? So come back here, let's go ahead and write in our 0.5. Where does that go? From zero to Z. And then the probability associated with the 85 is 0.5. And then we're looking for that smaller chunk to the right of it, right? We know from zero all the way down to infinity is 0.5 as well. So we're actually gonna end up with the same answer that we did in example two. Because we get the probability that X is greater than 85 is 0.5 minus 0.5. So again, that score of 85 is so many standard deviations away from the mean that it's so unlikely for it to happen that someone scoring an 85 or greater is a 0% chance, right? 
So let's try that again um, with example four. So we're referring back to the grades thing again. So your stats class, you're doing terrible. Oh, so sad. Um, what is the chance of randomly selecting a student with a grade between 58 and 62? Crazy. We have two x scores now, right? So two x values. So we're interested between 58 and 62. So let's try this out. We got midpoint is 42 still. Standard deviation is still 10 because we're talking about the same distribution, right? Remember, distribution has a first and a last name, and that is the mean and standard deviation. So random parentheses means standard deviation. That's how you denote normal distributions. So if we're talking about the same one, has the same mean and standard deviation. Um, we're interested in 58 and 62. So 58 is to the right of 42, and so is 62. Right, and these are all x values. X values referring again. These x values refer to grades, right? So, what's our next step? You gotta get z's, right? What's the z score for 42? Off the top of your head, it's gotta be zero, right? Because it's the middle. Now, next, let's get our z score for 58. So let's say, just to not get confused, let's say x is 58. The corresponding z-score would then be the x-value itself minus the mean divided by a standard deviation of 10. So 58 minus 42, that's 16, so we get 1.6. And then the x-value of 62 gets a z-score. Should be greater or lower than 1.6? Should be higher, right? We have an x-value that's now further away so we should have a higher number of standard deviations away from the mean, right? So 62 minus 42 over 10. So our z ends up being 2.0, right? Cool, so we got 1.6 and 2.0 for our z scores. Now our next step, or our last step, is now to look it up in our table, right? But first, let's go ahead and highlight the area that we're focusing on. We're looking for 58 to 62, right? Does that make sense? So now let's go to our table and look up 1.6 and 2.0. So 1.60, right? And 2.00. So 4772, 4452. 4772, 4452. So 4772 is from, the mean all the way to 62, right? And then I believe it was 4452. So you got 4452 and 4772, good. Sorry about that, I have terrible memory. And then 4452 is from the mean to 40 to 58 inches. Does that make sense? So 4772 is uh, 42 inches to 6, I'm sorry, inches, wow. 42, a grade of 42 to 62, and then um, 4772 is 42 to 62, 42 to 58 is 4452, awesome. So to get the area, that smaller area, we have the bigger one. We have the smaller little chunk in between. So to get the leftover, right, that yellow part, all we have to do is just subtract. So the probability that an x is between uh, 58 and 62 is 0.4772 minus 0.4452. So we end up getting... 0.0320. Awesome, so that's it in terms of applying the z-score. So all the things we've learned, the probabilities, the distributions, mean, standard deviation, how to get a z-score, and also the probabilities um, from the table, kind of tied it all together and now bringing it back to just a big problem, a big word problem. So now let's go ahead and do a couple practice problems so we make sure that we understand these concepts and how to pull out that information from the word problem and find what we need to find.